Okay, so a slight change in tract, uh, renal to gastro tract. Um, thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to present. I think as far as uh, our specialty goes, bowel cancer screening is, um, is probably the biggest change that I'll see in my career and it's going to be a, um, a program I think that's going to save countless lives of, of uh, all of our patients and, uh, and in our country and probably some of us in this room. Uh, so it's my pleasure to talk about bowel cancer screening. It affects everybody. Uh, this is Doug Myers who you may know passed away from bowel cancer. So it's a totally preventable bowel cancer that, sorry, it's a totally preventable cancer uh, that can affect anybody. I'm going to talk about the situation that we've had in New Zealand uh, with regards to bowel cancer and the lack of screening uh, and then how we've got to the screening point that we're at now. Uh, the program that has been uh, piloted across on the North Shore, the workforce planning uh, and then where we're heading with bowel cancer screening now. And then at the end talk about your guys' role uh, in this important program. So our statistics are, are pretty awful actually in New Zealand. Uh, 2008, uh, about 2,800 people were diagnosed with bowel cancer and look what's happened eight years later, 3,300 people were diagnosed with bowel cancer. So quite a growth, 15% in men, 19% in women. And of those diagnosed back in 2008, about 1,300 uh, people passed away from that cancer. This is another uh, interesting graph. It shows you the increased um, age-specific incidence of colorectal cancer uh, as you get a bit older. I'm about to turn 45. Unfortunately, I'm right at the uh, sort of takeoff of the uh, increased risk. And in other countries, uh, they're actually starting to look at screening uh, even from the age of 45. The lifetime risk in New Zealand is, um, is about 6%. It's the second most common cause of cancer death in New Zealand. Uh, sixth for men, third for women. Uh, lung cancer is the highest cause of cancer death and there's colorectal cancer sitting second there. And the big difference between cancer such as lung cancer um, is it's a very preventable cancer because we've got a test that can pick it up uh, early, uh, which is why it's a good target for screening. And we know that if we pick up bowel cancer early, your chance of survival uh, is dramatically different compared to when you pick it up uh, in later stages. This is another concerning um, slide. At the top you can see Australia and New Zealand. The blue bar there is the incidence of colorectal cancer and then the red bar underneath uh, each blue bar is actually the mortality uh, of uh, colorectal cancer. So New Zealand and Australia are, are, are pretty terrible as far as um, international rates of bowel cancer uh, goes. So how have we screened historically in New Zealand? Well, I guess we haven't really at all. So asymptomatic average risk patients have had no options for screening. Generally what we've done is put patients into categories of risk based upon family history. And I won't go through that because you guys probably know that pretty well. If you've got first degree relatives or lots of them, uh, then there's categories that you get put in and then there's guidelines to follow as far as screening goes. So that was the only screening that we've had uh, for asymptomatic patients. I want to give you a, a case example. A 56-year-old lady comes into your practice. She's fit and well. Her father was diagnosed at age 56 with bowel cancer and she watched her father pass away at the age of 57 uh, of that cancer. There's no other family history of note. Would you advise her to be screened for bowel cancer? A lot of nods. Obviously this is a loaded case because in New Zealand you can't. If, but if you think about what's happening for this lady, she is now at the age where she saw what happened to her father, so clearly there's going to be a lot of anxiety and concern uh, regarding that. Uh, but she's fit and well with, with no symptoms. And I'm sure you guys see people just like this in your practice. So what should we do with average risk patients? Well clearly screening would be fantastic if we could offer it to, to people like this uh, patient that I've just men mentioned. Um, the Pacific Island and Maori group of patients have a higher risk uh, of mortality and so there are special uh, problems that we have in New Zealand and we know from other uh, countries that if you do screen it does reduce the mortality. So you can see that point there, 16 to 90 percent reduction in mortality and the reason for that huge range is it depends on which program you use. If you use a colonoscopy based expensive difficult to roll out program like they do in the States 
uh, you can reduce bowel cancer rates dramatically. Um, and so it depends uh, which type of screening that, that you use. With what we've uh, piloted and what we're rolling out in New Zealand, each DHB is expected to uh, discover about 80 cancers uh, which are asymptomatic in the community uh, each year. So what's been done to try and start screening in New Zealand? There's a lot of workforce challenges. The big issue uh, is not sending out kits to everybody, obviously, it's actually um, dealing with all the colonoscopies that are going to come in for that. And so the workforce challenges have been trying to be addressed across the country. We're starting to train uh, some nurses to do endoscopy. There's more gastroenterology trainees are coming through the program. Uh, but obviously there's a very long lead time uh, before we get these people uh, up to speed uh, to roll out this across in different places around the country. There's also a lot of work going into setting up a quality assurance and accreditation framework across the country because it has to be the same wherever you have it. If you're in the East Cape or up north or in the middle of Auckland, you should have access uh, in an equitable system to the same level uh, of care. And then there was the bowel screening pilot, which was done across in WDHB. Uh, the bowel cancer uh, pilot, I think this is what um, the public think bowel screening is. I think it's one monkey looking up another monkey's butt. Well, I think those are baboons. Um, as gastroenterologists, we think it's more like this. It's a never-ending story. It seemed to go on and on and on and on and on before the government has finally committed to uh, other people having it. Uh, this, is, this is the way we deal with the politicians. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what we want to do is find um, either early cancers or polyps like that uh, with a colonoscopy. So the screening pilot uh, was a, a FIT test, uh, which is an immunohistochemical test, and I'll talk a bit about that uh, in a minute and why that was selected. It was a RFP that was across uh, the country, uh, and WDHB won that with support from us out at counties uh, in Auckland Central, because they obviously needed suddenly a whole lot of people to do colonoscopy. So we had a couple of our uh, consultants going across there and doing endoscopy for a number of years. Uh, it was for people in the WDHB region. You had to be between the ages of 50 to 74, uh, and that's important because, as I'll tell you in a minute, that age range has changed with the program that we've ended up with. Uh, this two-year screening cycle, so each two years you get sent an invitation uh, to uh, participate. It started way back in 2011, and then it was continually extended. This is some of the um, results. The uptake uh, of screening, in any screening program, uh, it's actually the uptake which uh, most affects the outcome. So if you've got good uptake, uh, it cost, becomes cost effective, uh, and you obviously save more lives. And so you can see there in that purple bar, in the total population uptake, uh, we're sitting somewhere around uh, 60%. Uh, this is in round one, the first round. But the big points uh, from the WDHB data is that the uptake in the Pacific population was you know, only 30%. Uh, and the Maori population was sitting in the mid-40s. So again, shows that it was difficult to get um, them involved as much in the screening uh, as the other ethnicities. If you look in the second round, uh, those did increase. So the Maori increased uh, there, and the Pacific increased. Sorry, other way around. Pacific increased there, and the Maori increased. So they did a great job uh, going into the communities, but it was still difficult to get that message. And so that's something that you know, we're focusing on uh, in, in uh, counties as we roll out our screening program. So the results, um, the overall positivity rate from these FIT tests was about 7.5%. So 7.5% of patients who did the test um, needed a colonoscopy. Um, this data is old because it's from the, from the pilot. So they found 300 uh, approximately cancers between those years. And this is an important slide because it shows the difference in the natural history of this disease versus the history in patients who are picked up through the screening program. So down the bottom is, oopsie, down the bottom is the um, expected number of cancers by stage uh, from something called the Piper Project, which was done uh, back in, prior to 2015 in New Zealand. And you can see that stage one bowel cancer was only found in about 11% uh, of people in, in the normal situation, and about 46% in stage two. This is the stages that uh, were discovered in the, in the pilot. So you can see 44% were actually stage one cancers. So there is a shift to the left um, in the stage that the cancers are found, which is not surprising because these are asymptomatic patients, remember. 
Um, but as I've already said, if you can pick up cancers at an early stage, then the survival rate is, is excellent. And so this really does make a massive difference uh, for those people to be diagnosed uh, early like that. 75% um, of patients uh, obtain their results from their GPs. Um, and there were lots of positives about the GP being involved uh, according to um, information collected from patients involved uh, in the pilot. GP awareness is critical, particularly for patients who are anxious um, you can imagine when a patient gets a positive result, they all think that they've got cancer. Um, and of course most of them haven't. Uh, but that does create a bit of anxiety. And so uh, having you guys involved uh, in this program and having you guys aware of um, you know, what's going on is, is very important. And of course some are going to be reluctant to have a colonoscopy. They might do the FIT test, but they don't want to go on and have the colonoscopy. And uh, that's a, obviously a very difficult situation and, and needs someone who knows them well um, um, like you guys to try and convince them to uh, carry on with the program. Just a quick word on the cost. Uh, this is um, some work done uh, by the Ministry of Health uh, and it looks at the, um, the total cost um, of lifetime costs and benefits for the average person in the whole population. So if you don't screen someone for bowel cancer compared to screening, it's actually cheaper uh, to screen. And so New Zealand actually saves money by screening uh, as opposed to uh, costing money. Uh, because you don't have the extra care, people dying early, paying less tax, etc. And so overall, uh, screening does make financial sense as well. But this really was identified as the problem. If you roll out the screening in that 50 to 74 age group like the pilot, uh, this blue bar here is the increased need for colonoscopy, um, according to our modelling. And once you do a colonoscopy, if you find polyps, those patients then go into a three or perhaps a five year follow-up, and you can see this yellow bar, which is growing and growing and growing here, uh, is the next problem where you need more and more and more colonoscopies um, to keep up with that uh, demand. So back in uh, 2016, um, different governments, etc., uh, it was announced that the screening program was going to be rolled out. And I think these points are really important. The criteria was narrowed uh, to 60 to 74, uh, and the sensitivity of the FIT test was uh, was changed. And so we did end up with a slightly watered down, or quite significantly watered down, I guess, version uh, of uh, screening compared to uh, what the pilot showed. And I think that decision was made uh, as a pragmatic uh, approach to try and address that increased colonoscopy demand. Because lots of uh, places around the country looked at that and said, well, how on earth can we meet this colonoscopy demand? At minimal, we're very fortunate we've got lots of gastroenterologists, we've got 14 of us there. So we you know, felt that we could quite easily do that. Uh, but in a number of DHBs, that, that is going to be a significant challenge. And I think probably what will happen, like the breast screening uh, program, the age range has been expanded over time. And so perhaps once this is established in different, in all the uh, centres around New Zealand, we might end up with the range getting uh, increased and the fit sensitivity being changed. But this is what we've got at the moment. So these were the rollouts across the country. So we actually, we were supposed to start in June, but we started in July. So we've been uh, running for a few months now. Uh, this was the in, in, indicative rollout uh, initially. But in fact, um, Northland and Auckland, I think, have been pushed back uh, over, over to there now. So how many GPs here are, um, are in counties? Yeah, oh, lots. Yep, OK. Uh, and how many are in um, Auckland Central? This is a range. And how many are on the shore? Okay, yeah, interesting. So Auckland, you guys are missing out at the moment. Um, and I actually don't, I, I was talking to the head of department at Auckland the other day and, um, and we don't yet know exactly when uh, Auckland's going to start and they certainly have uh, issues with their colonoscopy capacity uh, which is, yeah, they're trying to address. So what's going to be the role of the GP in this program? Some of you guys will look like more than half of the audience are already involved because um, Obviously, counties has just started, and WDHB has been doing this for a while. But I think there's four main differences. Um, I reckon that you guys are the most important part of this program compared to other screening programs. The other difference is a population-based register is used, and this is um, an opt-out as opposed to an opt-in program. And so everyone, you know, gets sent, and I'll show you how this is, how this works. Everyone gets sent an invitation. Uh, to, to participate as opposed to having to decide to participate. Uh, the other difference is the test is done in the comfort of the patient's uh, own home. 
an NH, the NHI database is used, and this database is um, updated from PHO databases. And the patient, around the time of their birthday, um, receives a pre-invitation. So it's like, happy birthday, send us some of your shit. <laughs> what a present. It's fantastic. Thank you. You can say thank you to the government for that. Um, and then the kit is then sent out, the pack is then sent out, and the patient performs the test, uh, and um, it is posted uh, back in uh, to, to the lab that's running the program. Um, I feel sorry for the posties. Um, there's a number of important uh, things that uh, the GPs involved have to be aware of. It's very important to encourage the minority groups. I've already shown you that the, the rates of bowel cancer mortality is much worse in, uh, in disadvantaged socioeconomic groups, and also the participation rates are lower. And so we really need to focus on those uh, patients to try and get them uh, involved in the program. Uh, if your patient is ineligible, and I'll show you what the eligibility criteria are in a moment, uh, it's very important that the program is informed. So we do rely on, um, on you to, wow, two minutes, on, on you to, to tell us who's not uh, allowed in the program. Well, I will jump forward. Uh, oopsie, I'll go back to that one. That's an important one. So if your patient, um, if your patient has uh, a test, we know that if they have a positive test, seven out of ten of those patients will have polyps. Okay, and if they have a positive test, seven out of a hundred who have a colonoscopy will have cancer. So if you just remember sevens, because probably what you're going to get is a patient who suddenly has a positive result, and they're going to think, oh, I'm dying of bowel cancer. Well, 7% of them will have bowel cancer, 93% of them won't. But a lot of them will have polyps, and that's the big thing that they found uh, in the pilot, that there were a lot of polyps that were removed over time. Um, the test is pretty simple to do. Uh, the test is done uh, with a little stick like that that you rub across the top of your, of your poo uh, and send it in. Um, <coughs> These are the um, patients who we, who we um, don't want in the program. If you've had a colonoscopy within the last five years, uh, those patients uh, are excluded from the program because presumably they've had uh, a good colonoscopy, had polyps removed and they shouldn't have cancer. If they already have uh, bowel cancer previously and they're uh, on a follow-up program, if they have had their large bowel removed, um, if they have an inflammatory bowel disease, etc., or if they have other significant comorbidities. So if they're you know, end stage COPD or pancreatic cancer or some other problem, then we rely on the GPs to uh, exclude the patients out of the program. Okay, thank awesome. you very much.